Hello, time for another Man and Great Book Review. Today's book is Let's Go Exploring, Calvin and Hobbes by Michael Hingston, published in 2018 by ECW Press. It's 120 pages. This is part of ECW Press's Pops Classic series. Uh, Bill Waterston uh, drew the Calvin and Hobbes cartoon for 10 years between 1985 and 1995. It's a simple story about a six-year-old hyperactive boy and his toy stuffed uh, plushy tiger whom he imagines is real and all their various adventures in a middle-class suburban neighborhood in the Midwest. The uh, comic strip was an instant hit, and by the time it ended 10 years later, it was the most popular comic strip in the world. This book tells basically the story of how Bill Waterston came to draw Calvin and Hobbes and the three decisions that he made along the way that both puzzled and astonished his uh cartoon syndicate and his audience. There's a brief biography of Bill Waterston, and it has to be brief because Waterston is one of the most reclusive cartoonists in history. He's only given a handful of interviews uh, throughout his life. There's only one photograph of him that's been widely distributed, a photograph from 1983 at the beginning of his career. And he only uh, he's never given a television interview, and he's only given one public speech, a uh, commencement address, at his uh, alma mater, Kenyon College, uh, back in the early 1980s. Um, one of the things that the book goes into is what the, the timing, the timing of how important this was. It came along when newspapers were still widely read. It was before the, the, the rise of the Internet. And so uh, it, the, the funny pages was one of the few areas where everybody, regardless of your age or political opinions, almost everyone read the funny pages. And Calvin and Hobbes had a kind of universality to it. Uh, children loved it. Adults loved it. Uh, there was really no... no <laughs> No group of anti-Calvin uh, people. Every, everybody really loved the cartoon. The three basic decisions that Bill Waterston made that were, were shocking to everybody, uh, number one was his decision not to license the Calvin and Hobbes characters for merchandise. Um, he still remains to this day the only major cartoonist not to sign a licensing deal. There's no Hobbes plushy stuffed tigers, toy tigers. There's no Calvin lunch boxes. There were no TV specials, no animated films, nothing except a series of book collections of the strips, uh, all of which were bestsellers and all of which remain um, in print. Waterston's decision really went up against the syndicate because they had a deal in the contract that he originally signed where the syndicate would get half of all the royalties from any, any um, things, any merchandise that was sold. So not only did Waterston lose out on a lot of money, so did the syndicate. In fact, it's been estimated that there's been probably at least $10 million uh, of revenue they could have made if, if Waterston had agreed to license it. So he gave up multi-millions of dollars because he didn't want uh, objects made based on his cartoons. He, wanted, he, he thought himself as an artist, and he thought merchandising it was crass and would bring the, the, the strip's reputation down. The second decision he made that was stunning was uh, he renegotiated his contract five years into the run of Calvin and Hobbes. And in that negotiations, he uh, won the right to take two nine-month sabbaticals. Now, nowadays, it's not unusual. In fact, most cartoonists have written in their contract uh, the right to take a month off every year. So usually they'll take a couple of weeks off in the summer and a couple of weeks off at Christmas or something. But to take nine months off twice in five years was really unprecedented at the time. Uh, but it shows you how much uh, authority, how much power that Waterston was able to achieve because of the popularity of a strip that the syndicate agreed to this. So for two nine-month periods, he left, stopped drawing Calvin and Hobbes. He said he needed that, that time to kind of recharge his creative battery, so to speak, and get away from it. Um, and then the final decision he made that was shocking to everybody was the decision to stop drawing the strip after 10 years. He, he came to an, you know, he, just, he announced a few weeks before the ending that he was going to stop drawing the strip at the end of uh, 1995. Uh, and he did. And he never went back to it. Uh, he spent the last 30 years basically living in a reclusive life in obscurity, rarely, never making public opinions, rarely making any kind of public statements. 
and uh, only in the only recently, only last year did he uh, reemerge uh, when he published a uh, graphic novel. Uh, but he hasn't cartooned at all since uh, since leaving Calvin and Hobbes. And in the rare interviews he's given since that time that he left in 95, he's never expressed any regrets for it. He basically said he was burned out, that he had achieved all that he wanted to achieve with Calvin and Hobbes, and he didn't want to repeat himself. And he became increasingly unhappy with the uh, the way the the comic strips were being shrunk on the, on the page to save money. Uh, of course, this was at the beginning of the decline of the newspaper industry. Um, this the career of Calvin and Hobbes and Bill Waterston's career drawing the strip uh, really uh, kind of is a is an object lesson or a, a, an illustration of the old adage: uh, "Be careful what you pray for, because you just might get it." Waterston achieved a kind of success, both critically and with popular people, that's really only happened a handful of times in the whole history of cartooning. He had this massive, massively successful cartoon and one that was highly respected. He was highly respected by critics and by fellow cartoonists. He won n multiple awards uh, for cartooning, none of which he appeared in public to accept. But in spite of all this success, he was never really happy. As this book makes it clear, he, he spent the entire 10 years, he was drawing Calvin and Hobbes, fighting with his syndicate over various issues and trying to avoid uh, the press. He, he hated all the attention he was getting. He felt his privacy was being invaded. And he also felt under a constant pressure to uh, to uh, keep the lev high level that he'd started for himself. He didn't want to rely on uh, you know, uh, gag writers or assistants. He did everything on the strip himself. His his inspiration for that was Charles Schultz, the cartoonist behind the Peanuts comic strip. Schultz was the same way. He wanted to do everything himself. Uh, Schultz drew the strip, wrote it, lettered in the the uh, uh, captions and everything. He did everything himself, and so did Waters. Did. And uh, after 10 years, he basically felt that he had done everything that he had wanted to do with a strip, and he didn't want to continue. And he just quit, and he never, never looked back and apparently never regretted his decision. So if you grew up reading Calvin and Hobbes or you came to the strip from the, the many books that were issued uh, and you want to know more about this enigmatic and kind of reclusive uh, cartoonist kind of puzzling character, uh, you'll learn a lot by reading this book. Of course, there's no Calvin and Hobbes strips in here because, of course, uh, 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 Waterston wouldn't license it. Oh, there's also one other chapter in here that's... that's Probably the most amusing one is about the bootleg Calvin uh, logos that you see on bumper stickers and on uh, windshields of various pickup trucks where Calvin is peeing on something. Uh, this all started actually while the strip was still being drawn in the 1980s. Uh, and it started in the southern United States almost exclusively among um, Southeast Conference football fans where Calvin would pee on the logo of another football team. Uh, rival football team, and it kind of spread from there. And Waterston uh, didn't really try to take legal action against this because these were all tiny companies that were around for a little while and quit. There's also a kind of subgenre of this where instead of Calvin peeing on something, he's praying on a cross, uh, which is kind of ironic because you know, the people that post these are breaking the law because uh, it violates copyright law because Waterston never approved of any of these things. Anyway, if you are a fan of Calvin Hobbes, either through reading the books or when, when they were out originally in newspapers, uh, you'll really enjoy reading uh, kind of the background of this strip and um, trying to figure out why Waterston suddenly walked away from the strip and uh, his, his rare appearances since then. The book is Let's Go Exploring Calvin and Hobbes. The author is Michael Hingston. This has been another Manning Great Book Review. Thanks for watching.